Good evening, Calvary. What a blessing to have you with us tonight as we praise and worship. And um, it's our prayer that as you join in tonight that you would surrender. Lord, surrender your circumstances, surrender your day, surrender your time, surrender your thoughts right now to Jesus and let him come and meet you where you're at. so powerful about him is so simple father we just surrender all to you all that we have lord we give to you because you're worthy of it all lord so lord with all the good and all the bad we just lay it all down before you we lay it down ourselves before you everything that we are so that you may form us and that you may mold us and shape us into what your will has for us father we thank you so much for the opportunity just to lay everything down before you and for you with a smile on your face to say you are forgiven and to just raise us up, Lord, and to lead us out in the world, not as what we came in before as, but Lord, a new creation, a new, a new being just built by you, Father. And we're so thankful for that. We're thankful that we can just do, we just have to surrender all to you, Father. And we thank you and we love you. And it's in your mighty name I pray. Amen. Well, good evening, Calvary family. Can you believe it? Today is the last day of 2020. So there's still a little time to finish your shopping before my birthday tomorrow. Um, I'm sure everybody's going to be staying up late, watch the ball drop. Although I imagine that's going to look a little different with all of the COVID restrictions. But um, hey, 
2020 is almost done. Uh, and so, you know, as we come to the new year, oftentimes, what do we think about? We think about the things that we want to accomplish. I know one of the big things that I want to do for 2021 is see my family. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I haven't seen my parents uh, since last Christmas, and I haven't seen the rest of my family, my extended family, uh, since um, well, I don't know, September of 2019. And uh, so Heather's parents were able to come see us in November of 2020. Um, but we miss all of our family. We miss uh, people. So that's one of the things I want to do. Uh, I'm sure you've got some uh, goals that you would like to accomplish. And Tuesday night, we talked about uh, finishing strong. And tonight I want to talk about starting strong. You know, one of the things that we do as a staff is I have people set uh, 90 day goals and really it's, it's in 90 day increments, right? So uh, it's the first quarter, January, February, March, I ask them, what are the next, over the next three months, what are seven to eight things that you want to accomplish that will move your department forward the most? And then at the end of that 90 days, I ask them to grade themselves on how well they do. Did you do 75%? Did you 100%? So here's what I, here's what I found in setting goals is that if you get 100% every time, you've set your goals too small. Right? It's too easy, too light. Uh, you're not putting enough effort into setting big goals. But if you fail at every goal, let's say every time you get like 50%, then you've set too big a goals. Setting goals is, a, is a really a skill that you want to be able to accomplish it, but you don't want it too hard and you don't want it too easy. Otherwise, you'll stop working on it. But we as Christians aren't necessarily looking for those types of goals. Now, it's okay to have those things, but it's not necessarily the focus of what we do. It's, it's good to have purpose and plan, but we want to make sure that we cover it in uh, prayer, in, in guidance by God and the Holy Spirit. And so uh, one of the things that I've challenged the staff to do for 2021 is to set some spiritual health goals. What are things that you want to grow in as a Christian? What are what are some accomplishments that you want to see? Do you want to increase your Bible reading? Do you want to increase your time for uh, devotions? Maybe you as a, a believer, maybe you've been a mature believer for a while, maybe you want to tackle the task of writing a devotional for other people because we're all called to disciple people. It's not just pastor's jobs. And so maybe you have a big spiritual task that you need to accomplish. And as I was thinking about this for today, uh, for today's devotion, um, I was thinking of two different uh, portions of scripture. Uh, the first one in Philippians chapter 3, um, verse 12, here's what it says. It's not that I have already obtained all this or have already made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took a hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. And straining towards what, ahead, what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Listen, uh, each year you probably, uh, you fail a little bit, but you also succeed. Forgetting what is behind. Listen, the, the life that happened in 2021, we don't want to make light of it. We don't, don't want to dismiss it, but we also don't want to be defined by every negative thing that has ever happened. When we do that, we oftentimes end up living in the past indefinitely. And that really shakes us to our core. As we look to 2021, this is an opportunity for a fresh start. And this is the beautiful thing as Christians that I really love, that I think it's, it's something we should all find excitement and encouragement in, is that each day can be a fresh start if we invite the Holy Spirit into it. If the Holy Spirit can come into our day and help us to grow and evolve, not evolve, but develop beyond where we were the day before, then we have the opportunity to move forward. And Paul says again in 1 Corinthians, something that I find so very important as we look towards growing spiritually in our lives. Here's what he says uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. It says, do, not, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Uh, run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Here's my encouragement for you tonight. Um, set a spiritual growth plan for your life. For the year, even just for next month. 
you know, this month, and well, not this month, January, we're going to start a 14-day prayer and fasting. We're going to start it in the middle of the month. We're going to start January 17th. Uh, I believe that's the date. I don't have the calendar right in front of me. And we'll, we'll do through the 31st, and then we'll have a worship night that 31st. Um, but it will give you an opportunity to refresh and revive and refocus your mind on spiritual things. See, it doesn't matter how long you've known Jesus. Um, we have the opportunity to start new and afresh each and every time that we come before him and humbly submit and repent and give him a larger portion of our life. And so as we move into 2021, hey, go ahead and set your New Year's resolutions. Uh, like I said, we know that like 60% of them fail by the end of January. Go ahead and set your New Year's resolutions. But more important than that, set your spiritual growth pattern. Set your spiritual growth plan and figure out the things that God is, that you want to get from God, that you want the investments and deposits that you want to see God give to you in this year. And then like Paul says in 1 Corinthians, beat your body, make it form to the will of God so that you will not be disqualified for the prize. Because if we invite God into our goal setting, if we invite God into a greater portion of our lives, I guarantee you and I promise you, you will see more success in the goals that you set because you have given them to God first rather than setting them and then asking God to bless them. And so as we go into 2021, I want to encourage you, go in with excitement and anticipation of what God's going to invest in you this year. I promise you, if you give God more, he will also give you more. Let's go into 2021 excited. Let's make this the year of the Lord, 2021, where we give God all that we have. We hold nothing back and we fully embrace all that he has for us. Let me pray for you. Father, right now, I just thank you. 2020 has been a challenging year. 2021 can be a year of growth, expansion, and goals that we achieve through your power and presence. And so I pray tonight, as we wrap up this year, that we would look to 2021 and look to you with, their eager, with an eager anticipation of all that you're going to do. Bless us this year and let us press in to attain the prize that you have for us. We thank you. We praise you. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Have a happy new year. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday, January 3rd. Uh, we're going to have a great message in the book of Acts. I uh, hope you enjoy the night. God bless you. We'll see you next year. You know I had to do that, right? I had to say I'll see you next year because that's a dad joke and it's appropriate. All right, God bless you. Have a great night.